Welcome back guys. The promoter's back. Um, if you haven't already seen it, go and find the first part effectively, which was called recommissioning an SB8R, I think. And this video will then make sense. So we left it, the bike went back to the customer, had really shitty cold start and small throttle openings the fuel in was dog shit basically it wasn't very good at all and i wanted to service the injectors but i didn't have the special tool to put the injectors in um, i now have the correct tool um, i'm just thinking i might need some blanks for here because i'm doing two in anyway let's not worry about that now fucking focus jim focus so i've got got to get the injectors out of this and service the injectors and if you remember from part one there was also a slight question mark over the TPS having a little bit of a dead spot. So I want to address these two things, clean the injectors and address the, sorry, that was my phone, clean the injectors and address the um, dead spot in the TPS. Reassess what the fuel is like and what it's, what it's like to start and then let's go from there. So I'm going to get it, I'm not going to film getting it apart, it's a fucking mission getting at the throttle bodies, all the fairings got to come off the tank, the seat, it's just fucking ridiculous. But I'll get it all apart, let's get the injectors out, I'll bring you back in and we'll see what the injectors are actually like. Um, I'm hoping it's just, you know, the injectors need servicing, they're not atomizing at all, or they're... anyway, let's get to that, get the injectors out, show you what's going on on the new machine, and we'll take it from there. Cool. Righty-ho, so injectors are out. Uh, this adaptory block thing from as new will do four injectors at once but it won't just do one or two injectors you've got blank the other holes off and <laughs> stupid trousers here didn't realize and didn't order the blanks and they're not in stock so I've got to come up with some sort of solution I think so I've got some aluminium I could turn some plugs on the lathe and dick around I might just try just for quickness I might 3D print some little plugs with some o-ring grooves. Um, not really a long-term solution, but that might just get us out of trouble just so I can do these injectors quickly. Um, right, let's go do that and then put these injectors in the machine. Okay, guys, welcome back. Um, so, different camera, different lighting. Sorry, the shots are a bit different, aren't they? But live with it. I'm just experimenting with a new camera, which I might talk about at some point in this video possibly um yeah so what, what where was i like because it's like a week ago believe it or not i was gonna 3, 3d print some plugs wasn't i and i sat down at my computer in my office and opened fusion 360 thought why am i even bothering they're not gonna last just make some aluminium ones jim and then i thought oh i really can't be asked to bloody stand at the lathe for an hour dicking around because my machining skills are fairly average <laughs> let's put it like that anyway so i had a bit of a scout a scout around online and i found get that in shot i found some of the original ones the proper ones uh, and they were 15 pounds each so it's not really worth wasn't really worth fighting although what i will say is although dimensionally they're they're perfect you know the aluminium is got big fat o-rings on and they won't fit stand by they won't fit in the holes the o-rings are just way too chunky so i don't know what's going on there but I've, i'll find some other o-rings i'll get the um injectors in the center two probably blank on each end and yeah let's let's test them see what they're like so there it is put some smaller o-rings on yeah so that's uh, getting shot. That's what it looks like together. Right, let's stick it in the machine and see if these injectors are the reason this promoter runs so badly. I'm not sure how this is going to come out on camera. Um, I might need to turn my light off, but <laughs> these are hands down the worst injectors I've ever seen. I'm actually quite shocked. So there is literally no atomization whatsoever you see it it's like a little hose pipe can you see it splashing the 
fluid up from the tank. Oh my days, basically. Yeah, let's clean them and let's go again. But that is almost certainly why it really doesn't want to run properly until it gets hot, low down. The worst I've ever seen. Okay guys, so I've cleaned and cleaned and cleaned these injectors uh, and not sure how well this is going to come out. I think I might have made a tiny improvement but not really. In fact, I haven't made any improvement. There's literally no atomization at all. So I've just been on the phone to Asnew. Um, that's the company, for those of you that don't know, the company that make this machine very, very knowledgeable. And these are Weber IW724s, I think. They're used in Ducatis, some Laverdas, I think, maybe some Motor Guzzies, not Laverdas, Motor Guzzies. Just trying to get some information about how should these injectors atomize. There's got to be more atomization than that, actually. This is really low light in here because I've turned the lights off, but they're not particularly well balanced either. Um, what was I saying then? So I spoke to Asnew trying to get some information about how these should atomize. And I'll report back because they didn't know and they're going to go away and see if they've got some sort of specification for them. Um, the issue we've got is they're discontinued. They're not available. So, and they've stopped manufacturing them apparently. So whether I can get some sort of other replacement. It's weird because this injector, sorry, I'm going down a rabbit hole here, but the way it's injecting its fuel, it, what am I trying to say? The way it fits into the throttle body, it literally would be spraying against the manifold wall. Um, I, it can't be right like that. They're single, Whole injectors so I'm not expecting you know a massive um, atomization pattern but I'm expecting some uh, yeah weird stand by and I'll get more information I'll report back right I'm back it's been I'm trying to remember where I was up to and, and what I've actually already said. It's two weeks later since that last bit you just filmed. I was trying to get information about these injectors. They're Weber, I think we already established this, they're IW724s. And information is pretty sparse. I was trying to find out what the atomization should be like. I spoke to Asnew and as great as Asnew are, they have no information. They've been out of production, these injectors, for like 15 years, a long time. Nobody seems to know anything about them. The only solid information I could find was the flow rate, 285 cc's. Uh, so that's all I know about them. And as I've previously said, they've been through the cleaning process multiple times and it hasn't improved the atomization at all. So in sort of slight desperation, there were another couple of injectors on eBay, so I bought two more. Now then, uh, before I talk any more about this, let me just clarify why I think there's a problem. So, these injectors are what you would call single hole injectors. So there's one orifice for the fuel to come out of. Is that coming out on camera? Not sure. Basically, there's one single hole for the fuel to spray out of. There are loads of different designs of injectors. You can have two holes, four holes, some even six holes, you know, for different spray patterns. The, the issue I have is, and I'll show you on the bike in a minute, but the angle that these injectors fit into the throttle body, and I've said this previously, I know I have, the fuel is literally getting sprayed onto the inside of the inlet manifold. And with a cold engine, all that's gonna happen, and this is why it's so hard to start from cold is you're just wetting the inside of the, in, uh, the fucking hell can't speak. You're just wetting the inside of the inlet manifold and hardly any of the fuel is making it into the combustion chamber atomized. 
which is why cold starts are such an issue. So, let me play you. I've got a little YouTube short, like I think I may have just said. I've got a YouTube short that I made servicing some injectors out of a GSF 1250, which were single hole injectors. And there's a before and after. And the before, a couple of the injectors had these tiny little jets of fuel and you'll see how the atomization was improved after the servicing process. Let me play you that now, um, so you've got a sort of idea of why I've got issue with these as they are, and then we'll come back and talk some more. Right, so you can see with any luck from that video why I, I think, I'll just turn that camera a bit, why I think these injectors are bad. Because, you know, I've been servicing injectors for probably the best part of, I must be knocking on the door of 20 years, and I've never seen an injector with no atomization like this at all. So uh, that gives you a little bit of a sort of background as to why I feel like there's an issue here. Why am I saying this, you're wondering? Well, huh, these, this second set of injectors I've bought are exactly the same. So now I'm really stuck because uh, they can't possibly be this shit from new. And these injectors have been already serviced. I won't give the company name just because I don't want to, you know, I'm not bitching and moaning. This company was selling the injectors on, on eBay as spray pattern good I uh, no it's not a good spray pattern is it even if uh, i've tried messaging this company and they've not got back to me because they might have more experience with these injectors and i'd just love to know if they are actually this shit even when they're new um these are the new injectors the ones from ebay let me just show you the atomization in fact i might need to turn my light off hang on standby I'm not even sure if that helps, does it? Let's give it a go. Wait for the duty cycle to come up a bit. You see they're doing exactly the same thing as the other injectors. They might be marginally better. There's some sort of more atomization around the sides of that jet of fuel, but yeah. What do you think, guys? I don't know. I actually just don't know. What I will say is, can we tip, tip that camera down a bit? No, wrong way. God, I'm such an awesome cameraman. Um, what I will say is, if we go to a, Let's find the right setting. So 100% duty is what we need. So they're supposed to be 285s. And that's measured. I've discussed this in the past. I know I have. There's even a video somewhere. If I can remember when I'm editing, I'll, I'll put a link in the thingy bob that pops out here. It's um, how injectors are sized. But basically, for those of you that don't know, at three bar, for 60 seconds, 100% duty. So you're feeding the injector with three bar of fuel pressure. The injector is permanently held open for 60 seconds and it's the amount of fuel it will give. This is a 15 second test, so this needs to be times by four. So what do we got? So they are, what's that, 75 times three. That's, 
that 175 that's a bit higher but that would be 300 cc's slightly over spec but they're certainly not under injecting and what I will say about these eBay injectors because that's what we're testing now these these are the old ones in my hand uh, they're slightly better balanced than the others I can't remember I need to look back at the video footage what the others were producing what I might do is leave the pressure setting because tiny differences in pressure will affect this reading so I might test the old injectors back to back with these and just see what the what, what they're flowing if that makes sense but yeah so I'm stuck really guys I think what I'm going to do I'll back to back test the other injectors now see what the others produce and then I'm going to put the best matched set in and then remember I mentioned the throttle position sensor then I'm going to go after the throttle position sensor I have looked I was hoping that I'd be able to find another injector that was a multi-hole outlet not a single hole so a two or a four hole so it was really atomizing the fuel with the same fuel delivery that would fit in the throttle body I know that's a modification they do that with some cars the older school cars had single hole injectors which weren't you know they atomized the fuel but not quite as well and there was a mod you know people would modify them with more modern multi-hole outlet injectors and it would improve performance fuel economy etc etc uh, and i was hoping that i could find something there are some subaru injectors that look very very similar and i yeah i don't i don't know whether i want, want to open a massive rabbit hole i might need to because bloody hell i'm waffling sorry when you research these SB8Rs online they were renowned for absolute dog shit fueling from new they were terrible they wouldn't start they'd backfire they'd yeah it, it's always been an issue with them as far as I can tell and this the, these this might be the culprit that why everybody struggled for so many years with them but I think this one is particularly bad anyway I'm waffling I'm going to put the other injectors in uh, oh, I'm going to put these injectors in because the eBay ones are in the machine at the moment. I'm going to put these in. Let's test these back to back. Now, the way these are atomizing is fresh in my mind. And let's just see where we are. Okie doke. Right, so let's uh, swap these over. Fucking hell, that's tight. Too tight. You land a fucking jumbo jet in there. maybe or maybe not or maybe loop it up okie dokie guys so let's see what these injectors let's remind ourselves what these injectors were like bleed the air from them right let's run this flow test this atomization test hang on let's turn the light out stand by I think it makes it easier for you to see uh, yeah I think that's probably the same oh. no I think there's less there is Oh, it's marginal, isn't it? There's, there's slightly less atomization with those, but you're splitting hairs, I think. Marginally better. Right, let's test the... Uh, let's stop that. Let's test the flow. Oh, 
I haven't touched the pressure gauge, so we're doing a like for like. So we need we need 100% duty on here. Where were we? 75, weren't we, on the others? 75 and 77, was it? Something like that. They're actually better, aren't they? So that one's dead nuts, 75, and that one's 74. So there's nothing between them in terms of fuel delivery. That one's actually... Need to look back at the video footage, I think. They were slightly more out of balance before, weren't they? I don't know how that's even possible, just having them sitting around. Very peculiar. So, what next? I think maybe the eBay injectors are atomizing ever so slightly better. I'll put the eBay injectors in, and then let's be 100% certain there are no vacuum leaks. Let's balance the throttle bodies and let's have a look at the TPS. I think that's where we're going next. I thought I'd just show you guys. So this is, you can see where the injectors go into the throttle body. So it fits in this casting here. And then if we, I'm sure how well this is gonna come out on camera, but in fact, stand by, I think I've got a torch in my pocket. I have got a torch in my pocket. So the injector goes in the throttle body here and if you sort of, I don't know, I can stick my finger in the hole, maybe no I can't, but fucking hell, great camera work Jim, well done. Basically the injector is going to spray on the back side of this, back side of the cylinder head. It's not even pointing vaguely at the valves. It's a really shit design, fair play. I think this is the, what am I trying to say, you know, all the issues with fueling that these have, these SP8Rs have suffered with, the, because this is a, in case you don't already know, this is a TL1000S engine, and the fueling on the original, no it's not, it's a TL1000R engine, I apologise, the original fueling, you know, the Suzuki fueling, I think they were, uh, it was k -in, was it? Or was it? It was K in fuel injection, I think, on the on the on the TL1000 now. Somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but that it fueled lovely that engine. But these are awful, and it's got these large throttle. I'm not going into it, but it's a shit design, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Anyway, let's get um let's get it back together. Check for vacuum leaks, and then we're going to investigate this TPS next. Cool. Okay, so I've got the injectors back in and I've got everything connected up and it just occurred to me, and I don't think this is the issue, but it, uh, get your thoughts together, Jim. So the fuel injection on this is sequential, meaning the in injectors don't just randomly fire, they're timed to fire at a certain point in the engine, you know, that certain point in the stroke um, of the engine, which is why there's a cam sensor and a crank sensor. Anyway, I won't go into it, but the injectors need to fire at the right point in time. And that's not so critical when the engine's revving quite hard and the revs are up, but at cranking and idle sort of speeds, sequentially firing the injector is quite important. If you fire at the wrong time, the inlet valve's shut then it's just going to exacerbate the you know the wetting of the manifold wall and i can't find i'm going to need to go in the warm and sit at my office desk and try and do a bit more research but i can't find a wiring diagram for it to know whether the wires are the right way around obviously it's got this power commander um fitted i need to research that a little bit more and then the other thing i'm doing is i've just got my scope connected to the tps and what I'm doing is I'm just putting my hand in the air box and just resting my finger on the butterfly because I'm I'm interested. I think I talked about it, didn't I? 
I'm interested in, in, there was a dead spot. If you re remember from when we first had this bike in, when you were cracking the throttle, the first sort of couple of degrees of movement of the throttle wasn't being picked up by the power commander, but literally the lightest touch on the butterfly with my finger, and it's been recorded by the by the TPS. So I'm not worried about that TPS. I thought that might be an issue. I just need to do a bit of research about those um, injector color wires because it'd be very easy. The connect the connectors for the injectors are next to one another. It'd be very easy to connect them up the wrong way round, which would I'm pretty certain have a an effect on the fueling. Right, let's get the tank on and uh, see how it runs. Right, okay. Contact. Oh, no fuel. Oh, hang on. Kill switch isn't on. Fuel pump. Full choke. Cross your fingers. Whoa! Now, whether you can hear me, it's so bloody loud that that started remarkably well. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. But, um, yeah, that started. Oh, hang on, it sounds a bit one cylindery now. Yeah, it's going on to one. Can you hear that? Yeah, it, start, it started on two, but it's. Rev it on four. What am I talking about? Fucking hell, that'd be a miracle, wouldn't it? It's on two cylinders when you rev it. Sounds like as the revs come down, I mean, it's not warm yet, clearly, and it's really cold in the workshop here. But it sounds two cil. Fucking hell, speak, Jim. It doesn't sound too. Two cylindery, that would be perfect. It sounds like it's dropping onto one cylinder as the RPM comes down. Let's try and get a bit more heat in it. I just wound the idle mixture, the idle mixture, I just wound, wound up the idle screw a little tiny bit. about all this that's the power commander wiring and fuel tank wiring and stuff just temporarily yeah it sounds don't know whether that's coming out on the microphone it sort of sounds almost like it's on one cylinder see this is the problem it's going to be super lean when it's starting uh, with that, you know, with that issue with the injector spraying on the manifold wall badly. I think what I'm going to do is it's late Friday. Let me turn this off. Yeah. So as it's getting a little bit of heat in it, it's um. not sounding too bad at all. So I think what we're going to do is it's late Friday night now. I should have finished work about two hours ago, but I really wanted to have some news for the owner of this bike. Um, what I'm going to do, what am I going to do? I need a plan. So the plan is going to be, I know the TPS now is okay. I know the injectors, uh, if they're right, then that's likely the cause of all the bad fuel in these bikes suffer from. Just the throttle body design is just terrible and the way the injector isn't atomizing fuel. So 
I need more information basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of research over the weekend on those colours of those injector wires. I just I just like to know because it, see the issue is it seems actually quite nice now, and I could have plugged those injectors in the other way around quite easily because the wires are just there and I stupidly when I took the injectors out I didn't pay any attention so maybe I've put them back the other way and that's why it seems to be running slightly better I think what I'm going to do do that research find the colour of those wires sorry I'm waffling and then on Monday morning I'm going to back probe the injectors I'll be interested in pulse width size when it's cold the amount of fuel it's going to it's getting and I'll also I'll put my AFR meter in there's a bung in one of the I think the I think the pipe for the rear cylinder, my wideband O2 will, will screw straight in. So I'll, I'll get some AFR readings as it starts and look at pulse width of the injector. And then what I might do is then let it cool, swap the injector wires over and do another cold start and look at the AFR. That might be a bit of a plan. I just, I feel like I need to sort of gather more information does that make sense it doesn't even make sense to me so <laughs> anyway i'll see you on monday guys which no it won't be this i'm just going to make this one episode i'm not going to split it up there's no point um it's sort of been ongoing for a few weeks but we'll, we'll get the whole episode um everything done in one episode right thanks guys see you soon hey guys me again um so it's sunday today when you last saw me working on that bike, it was uh, Friday night. So I went out in the workshop to get something yesterday, Saturday, and I tried to start it. And it started after a bit of a cranking session, but it was 100% on one cylinder. On the, It was running on the front cylinder, but it wasn't running on the rear cylinder at all. Um, and I just like, oh, whatever, I can't, I, I just, other shit to do. So I just left it. Just been out in the workshop now it's sunday today just been out in the workshop again and tried to start it won't fucking go at all cranky 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 cough through the air box why am i saying this this is definitely a part two i'm afraid we're not all gonna we're not gonna fit it all into one episode i think i was playing with the edit yesterday i think we're at 30 minutes already so definitely at least two parts this one I'm going to, tomorrow morning, which is Monday, I'm going to go in the workshop, hook my Pico scope up. I'm going to look at fuel injection pulse width, cam and crank signal. And I'm going to look to see, you can do some clever stuff with the Pico scope. So you can put like 720 degrees of crank rotation in and line your TDC up so you can see exactly where in which stroke the injectors are firing. And I know somewhere from memory, I haven't found it yet, but Suzuki have got a, a diagram. I remember this from years ago for a TL1000R for when the injector should fire at what part in the stroke, if that makes sense. So we can get that information and compare it to what Suzuki say it should be. Cause I'm, 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 I'm wondering about these injectors being connected the wrong way around initially. I'm also interested in, fucking hell waffling, I'm also interested in the pulse width of the injector because I've learned this quite recently about how much fuel is required for a cold start. There's a series of videos that are filmed but not edited um, on an RC45, believe it or not, rare old motorbike, and that had some cold start issues. And I went right into the weeds with that. I think there's four half hour episodes that will be coming up at some point. So I learned quite a lot about how much fuel is required from a fuel injector for a cold start. So I want to get that bit of information too. Sorry for the waffle. See you in part two.